immune system. And there isn't a direct connection. It's not that sure. you know um, you can eat this food and, and this food has necessarily, at least that we know about, a direct effect on how our immune system acts. But we know very clearly that our diet affects the microbes in our gut. And there's also very clear evidence now that the microbes in our gut affect our immune system. So even though we can't provide the direct links to say, this food will cause this bacteria to grow, which will have this specific effect, there's enough examples of this type of thing going on that we have to say, diet can affect the gut microbes and that can affect the immune system. And that's a message that many physicians simply are unaware of. Is that idea or that fact, is that relatively new? Or is that something that's been studied for, for years and years and years? The first sort of hints of this do go back decades. But there's been, a, a, just in the last few years, a real resurgence uh, of interest in this topic. And part of it is that we've had advances in our scientific technology that let us study these bacterial communities more easily, and, and advances that let us study the body's immune system more easily. Um, so, you know, scientists sometimes can be pretty uh, stubborn to let go of old ideas. And that can be a good thing. You don't want to just be seduced by every fad that comes along. Sure. Uh, but oftentimes, if you can't show a scientist a mechanism for why something happens, it tends to be taken a little bit less seriously. And it's only been in the last few years that there have been studies that are starting to demonstrate at a mechanistic level, and by mechanistic level I mean we know which gene in a bacterium encodes a certain protein, and we know what that protein does. It, it may be an enzyme that then makes a certain small molecule that's present on the surface of the bacterium, and we know that this one molecule by itself can interact with the immune system of the host and cause a definite effect. Wow. We know the genes that are involved in the microbe, we know the proteins, we know the molecules that, that send this message, we know what molecule on the surface of our immune system is the one that latches onto this chemical messenger, and we can track, well, here's the series of messages that happen in the human immune system that ultimately lead to a certain reaction. We know at the molecular level every step in the chain and now we've got a clear mechanism. Well, what we know, a few specific examples of these type of thing, it's almost certainly just the tip of the iceberg. There's going to be a huge amount, many, many more interactions that we don't know about yet. Sure. But it means that all of a sudden, uh, a scientist who's up on this literature should not be dismissing the potential to say that we control or we can influence the activity of our immune system by what we eat. Because wow. there's a clear potential for it to happen. And there's obviously clear stories that suggest sure. that it's happening. Not just mysteries out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're at the, we're at the, the stage to say uh, there's something going on here. We don't know what it is, but How about there's this? something. With regards to what you do here, is there a is there a lot of studies that you know about throughout the world that are related to things like IBD, inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's colitis, whatever the case may be, and diet? Is there a lot of stuff that is going on in the world? Is it a priority? So, is it um, so I'm not, I'm not, not a physician, and I'm not sure. an expert on the inflammatory bowel diseases, and. Uh, as scientists, the way we tend to work is we, we tend to sort of carve out a niche and okay. um, uh, focus on that area. So I'm less aware of what's happening in research of, on any respect of inflammatory bowel disease. Because gotcha. It's not my niche. Yeah, what you're um, I, so I'm somewhat aware, just because of you know, other studies in the gut microbes, I, I do pay some attention to it. Uh, it certainly is getting some attention. The fact that uh, both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis have increased dramatically in the last decades. Uh, it's seen as part of an increase in a, a whole host of kind of immune-regulated type disorders because there's been, you know, 
multiple sclerosis and lupus and rheumatoid arthritis uh, and asthmas and allergies. All of these are seen as kind of developed world diseases. Asthma is almost unheard of in uh, hunter-gatherer societies or subsistence-based agricultural societies. Um, it's a disease of more developed cultures. Um, same for, thing for Crohn's uh, and for all sort of colitis. Yeah. And so people have noticed that there's this phenomenon, a huge increase, where it's a you know, significant problem in many parts of the world. They're trying to figure out why some interaction with the, with the human microbiota is seen as a hypothesis that um, the reason potentially why kids that grew up on farms are less likely to have asthma and allergies uh, or kids that are uh, less exposed to antibiotics, again, less likely to have eczema or psoriasis or, or allergies, um, maybe because of the normal interactions that happen with our microbiota and our human body are things that actually turn down some of the inflammatory responses. We start living in a hyper clean environment, and not, I'm not even talking about the fanatics who are, sure. you know, trying to sterilize their homes. Bleach and everything. But, but simply just living in a city away from farms and, and farm animals sure. uh, may be enough. And then beyond that, maybe then you get these people that are nuts about getting triclosan, antibacterial products everywhere in the home. Uh, they may be setting themselves up and their kids up for some of these diseases of a misregulated immune system because our immune system normally regulates itself while in communication with these microbes that are part of you know, both our gut and other places in our body. Gotcha. Uh, so it's, it's got a name. It's called the hygiene hypothesis that, in effect, taking away our normal microbial interactions has led to an increase in all these spectrum of, sort of immune dysregulation diseases. Uh, fascinating stuff.